a C star mosaic gives me this, but I really want this. When you do a mosaic with the C star, you specify a field of view. Then the C star takes images and it crops down those frames into that specific field of view. But there's obviously more to the image because as we see in this animation, a lot of the frames get cut off once they extend past the field of view that you defined in the C star mosaic. And I was wondering how I can recover that data into what I'm calling the expanded field of view. This will let us post process our mosaics and get a much better final image. What I'm going to show you is pretty experimental, but I'm at a point where I'm able to consistently process this in PixInsight and it comes out pretty well. And the one thing to keep in mind is that the signal to noise ratio is a little bit weird because of the way the C star takes mosaics. Since it spirals out, not every pixel is going to get the exact same amount of signal. So even if you shoot something for 90 minutes, you don't have 90 minutes of signal. The toughest part about all of this is registering your images, which is just to align all of your images so that the stars kind of line up. Space Koala Channel has a really interesting way of doing it where she uses the final output from the C star as the reference frame that every other frame gets stacked into. And that's a really great way of doing it. It's a little bit manual and that also crops away all of the extra field of view, the expanded field of view. And that's what I want. So I want the expanded field of view and I also wanted to make this as automated as possible. And this does require a little bit of coding. It's, it's pretty easy. We're just copying a couple of lines of code that already exists in PixInsight that tells PixInsight and WBPP that you need to do these extra things in order to stack these frames. Because without those changes, we see a very high rate of rejection, which is unacceptable because the regular star alignment tool doesn't have that same, doesn't have the same problems. So we're going to dive in and stack a mosaic of M31 taken with the C star S30. For Windows, it's actually in, in my C drive, program files, and a directory called PixInsight. And we're gonna go into the source directory, SRC, and then to scripts. And there is a directory called batch preprocessing. And what we want to edit is a file called bpp-engine.js. What I recommend doing is making a copy of this and saving it as you know dot original or dot orig or something that's not bpp.engine. And we do that because if we ever want to revert back, we don't have to go back and edit the code. We just come here and rename the file and set this back to bpp-engine.js and put this as like modified or something, engine.modified, engine.new, etc. And while we're on the screen, I'm going to show you that you need to turn off the signature checking for the WBPP script. So what I did here is the original file was named .xsgn and I just put a .orig at the end so that there is no checking. Otherwise, the, what the signature checking does is, is checks to make sure that bpp-engine is what PixInsight provided and not something that's been manipulated. So if you download the script from the internet from not an official PixInsight resource, the signature will fail and it won't allow you to run WBPP. But since we're making the changes directly ourselves, we can turn that off and PixInsight will run. So we're gonna open this up in a, in a code editor. You can do this in Notepad, Notepad++. I use uh, Visual Studio Code where I actually opened up the entire source directory here and I am already opened into bpp.engine.js and bpp engine, bpp-engine.original has the original code unchanged. So in bpp engine, the five lines that we need to add are in the star alignment function. So SA is for star alignment. So I'll put these in the description and I'll also put this into a GitHub and also my website if I ever get that updated. So look in the description for links and help on copying and pasting these so that you don't have to copy while you're watching this video. And I found that these values are what's needed in order for PixInsight to run with our synthetic star field that we'll create in a minute. And it just works. And one additional change I made that you don't have to make is that the output prefix, you know, we have the dash R underscore R that indicates that it's a registered file. I just put custom. This way, when I look at the files later on, I know that it's working with my custom BPP engine and it'll prompt me to go back to the old one if I, if I ever just keep this on because I don't need to keep this on for regular stacking, just for C star mosaics. And once this is done, you wanna click on save. So if you do, I'm just gonna make one quick change here 
and then if I save, you're going to get a warning that says failed to save insufficient permission, insufficient permissions. It's because the folder here is locked to administrators only. So if you're using VS Code, you can do retry as admin. If you are making changes here, like for example, if I am to change this to, you know, it'll tell you, you need permissions, you just say yes and you can continue. If you must be an administrator on the machine in order to do this and then it changes. So pretty straightforward. So if you have PixInsight open, you wanna close it out and then restart it and that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, so I have PixInsight open and this is my S30 directory and M31 is what I want to stack and I have 742, so divided by three, whichever, whatever number that comes out to, number of files. And we're going to create a synthetic star based on one of these values. But before we do that, let's take a look at what C star output it for me. And it did not get rid of the frames that had trees in it. So that's why that's why it looks like this with the with the trees. Uh, it's a little bit of a shame, but because it was a really good image. So I can restack this within the C star app, which I didn't do. So what you can do is you can use this frame as a reference frame if you want, where it'll map out the stars here, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look through my M31 mosaic images. And I'm just looking at the previews here. I'm just picking one where the galaxy seems to be in the center and I'll make that as my center image. So I think this is what I like. I'm gonna open the fits file associated with that file uh, with that image and open it up. I do uh, STF on it. And now I'm uh, just going to guesstimate like how many frames I need to the right, how many I need to the left, up and bottom. And what works for me here is 3,500 pixels in either direction. Well, 3,500 by 3,500 for the whole image. Yours may be different. It, it'll differ based on what your mosaic size is in the C star. It's okay to get a bigger field than we need to. So there is astrometry data that's in this file from the C star, but but the PixInsight catalog star generator doesn't like it. So it's script render catalog star generator. And what I wanted to do was I want to copy over the files from the opened image here. And I can't do that because it's currently not recognizing the uh, the astrometry data. I can't even use use active image geometry. So we need to actually solve this really quickly. So we go to script, go to render, sorry, we go to script, we go to image analysis, and then we do image solver. And this is M31. So I think it already like pre-filled based on what it read. So the image solver script reads the astrometry data just fine, but we're gonna look it up anyway. Astrometry, blah, and then okay. You can see that it didn't really change, just the seconds changed here, and I'm just gonna click on okay. Uh, make sure my image scale is correct. I press OK. All right, and that took about five seconds. So I'm going to go back to script, render, catalog, star generator. And now I can use active image geometry or I can use do user define and copy over. The reason I don't want to use active image geometry is because the dimensions it'll use uh, will not match what I want. It'll just be 1080 by 1920 or whatever, um, whatever the image dimensions are. And if I click on use user defined geometry, I click on copy, you'll see that the RA and the declination and the date and time, everything changed. So did the dimensions. It got the dimensions from the opened image here, but I don't want that. So I'm gonna do 3,500 by 3,500. Make sure the image scale is good. Uh, you can do focal distance. Uh, so it, it detected 149.92. So I'll just leave it at that. The resolution was also fine. So I'll just leave it at this. Under the stars, under the maximum magnitude, the default is 15, but I'm doing 13 because there's just like tens of thousands of stars that get printed that don't get used anyway. So 13 is like more than good enough. And we want to generate a little bit of noise. So we click okay. So that generated about almost 4,000 stars. And we can open that and you can see that, you know, this is, this is good. So like Andromeda would be in the center somewhere. And this is just a star field, no nebulae, no galaxies. And it is a 3,500 by 3,500. Um, Star field. So I'm going to save this. So you can do file save as or control shift S. And I'm going to go back to my M31 mosaic here and I'm going to save it. You can save it as a fit file or TIFF file. 
or XISF file. I'm just going to do XISF because you can see that I already did it as a test earlier. I'm just going to do on um, 31 synthetic stars. Okay, so now I can close these because I don't need them right now. And in my directory here, we have you know, my new synthetic stars directory. So now what we do is we click open or script batch processing, weighted batch preprocessing. Okay, I have this here. You can see I was uh, image, uh, you can see I was stacking something else. So do, I'll do clear and I'll go to lights, find my M31 mosaic sub and I'm gonna click on all fits. So I can do a control A, uncheck the trees directory, which has all of my bad images that I moved into there, click open. I have 247 frames. So everything loaded, we have 247 frames. Under image registration on the right hand side, we're gonna click registration parameters. And the only change we really need here is this bottom option here. It says use triangle similarity. By default, I believe it uses pentagons, but the triangle similarity works best and gives the least amount of rejections with registration. With, with actually this setup, I'm actually going to get no rejections at all. The frames are good after I remove my trees. So this is what it looks like. And we can run this as is. If you're having trouble, if, you're, if your images have a lot of noise, like my horse and nebula had a lot of noise because of the moonlight. I took that image during the full moon, so I had a lot of trouble. What you can do here is you can increase the sensitivity to like, let's say like 97, like high 90s. The peak response to like the mid 80s, high 80s, and then give that a try. You can also, increase the noise reduction. So it'll apply a little bit of noise reduction to each of the frames. You can do one or two. You don't want to do too much because then that'll affect how Pixinsight sees the stars and then try that. And you should get much fewer rejections. But for my M31 image, I actually don't even need to make those changes. So I'll just reset and then just use triangle similarity. And then we're going to go to calibration. So cosmetic correction is on by default, but it's not going to really happen because we don't have any darks that we're applying to this. You want to make sure CFA images is checked because it is a color image. You can keep dark and flat checked here. It's not going to do anything because we don't have any of those frames. In the post calibration tab, we're going to leave everything default. We're not going to drizzle. I don't have enough frames to drizzle. If I had maybe like 3000 frames where each section of the mosaic actually had a good amount of data, I would do that, but I'm not going to. In the pipeline, uh, if you don't see anything here, you can, if you just uncheck and recheck, it goes there. I think it's a little, I think it's a bug. I only recently noticed that. So you wanna make sure image registration, image integration is checked. You do not wanna do local normalization. What I found happens is if you have this on, it gets rid of everything but the stars. Um, it's like gives you a starless image without using star, Starnet or star X. We also don't wanna do subframe weighting and or do linear defects correction. We're, we just wanna register and then integrate them. Once that's set on the right hand side here and the bottom here, we need to set our registration frame. By default, it's auto. And what that'll do is it adds another step here where it does a reference frame suggest selection. So it picks the best frame from the list. So we're gonna do manual and we're gonna click on this little folder icon. And we're gonna find our M31 mosaic directory and we we're going to click on this m31 synthetic stars directory click open the output directory i am so i'm going to put this in my m31 pi directory so that's that's where i have and once this is done i'll click on run it looks good to me and i'll click on run once more continue and then let this go which shouldn't take too long but we'll come back to it when this is over the registration was way faster than i expected just seven and a half minutes so I'll click done and then done once again, and then I'll close the WBPP window. So after I open up the image, I have my icons here and I'll do a quick unlinked STF to see what the data looks like. So uh, you can see that my field of view that I generated 3,500 by 3,500 is a little bit off. Probably could have done maybe like 3,800 in the Y axis and less on the, Z, on the X axis, but it's okay. Still looks pretty good. I will accept it. And then when we compare this to what the C star outputted for us, so that fits file here, we can clearly see that the, let's do another stretch here. We can clearly see that there's a difference in the field of view here where 
we are getting a ton more stars in this area. But the one caveat is that, you know, I mentioned earlier that the edges will end up getting a really low signal to noise ratio. Like here is like all noise, you know, and as you get closer to the center, the signal to noise ratio gets better. So like I would have to crop down in order to make this image viable, but that's okay. I'll still end up with a lot more field of view, a lot more stars than what the C star output and what I got from the mosaic. So it's still pretty cool. If I were to image this area for hours, maybe like five or six hours, the signal to noise at the edges probably would have looked a lot better than it does here. But this is only about 41 minutes of data. So this is pretty impressive, I would say, if I say so myself. So I'm gonna do a quick dynamic crop here just to show you like how much one would have to crop in order to make this look okay. All right, so this is what I have and I'm going to do a dynamic crop. And like here, even here, we can see that there is, you know, I have less noise in the outer edges. There's still some, but we can get rid of that. It's not as bad as before. And this is the field of view versus this. So we can go a little bit further and compare these two a little bit more to see just how much more area this one has. So we can go to process, image registration. We'll do a star alignment. We'll pick this one as my reference frame and then this one as a target image. And I'll just do this. Should take a couple of seconds. Here we go. And then we can do a STF on this. So I'm going to do this here and then I'll do a zoom to optimal fit, I think. I think that'll, that'll do the best zoom to optimal fit. And then we can put this on top of one another. And then we can see just how much more field of view there is. So the top here is our new image. So we can see that in the corners here, we have a lot more data compared to the old one. And we can flip these around and just to show you that the black areas here will now have stars. Pretty cool, right? This is the part of the video where I tell you that a live stacked version of an image will not be as good as a traditionally stacked and processed image. So after I did the M31 mosaic stacking and pics inside, I took a couple of minutes to process my version of M31 and this is what I ended up with. M31 could definitely look a lot better from the C-star itself, but I really like the expanded mosaic and I was able to get the noise under control. If I had a chance to collect even more light, even more data to give the outer areas of M31 and the outer frames of M31 a chance to increase their signal to noise ratio, I'm sure I'd be able to get an even better image than what you see here. I also took time to process my mosaics of the Soul Nebula and the Horset Nebula. Looking at the Soul Nebula from the Sea Star directly versus the expanded mosaic, this was about an hour of frames collected. And then when I finally processed it, I had to crop down quite a bit to get the noise under control, but this is still a much wider field of view than what the Sea Star spat out. And finally, the Horsehead Nebula has 90 minutes of frames, but remember that it's not exactly 90 minutes of data. I also shot it during the full moon, so you see a lot of blotchy blue background. I think I needed like five more hours of data from this region without the moon right next to it to make it look something like this that was taken with a traditional refractor and narrowband filters. The steps I showed you today should work with data coming from both the S30 and the S50. All of the images I showed you today have been from the S30. I've been enjoying doing live streams through the Seastar S30, and I'm hoping to do a few more before the year ends. So subscribe and join me for those remote star parties. They have been really fun. Also be sure to join our Discord server. The invite link is in the description below. We have a great growing community of astronomers and astrophotographers. Until next time, keep looking up. A lot of blotchy blue background, background.